Front Row Motorsports is really close to making a surprising pick to fill their open seat, and Noah Gregson is going cup racing. <laughs> How's it going y'all? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. We have so much to get to today. So much, in fact, that I might push at least one major story to tomorrow. So get ready for that one. But we do in fact have a lot to talk about today. A lot of silly season light news. Well, I guess some of this is actually pretty big, but we'll get to all that in just a moment. If you missed the premiere on Monday, the first edition of the Downhill Diecast Championship, something new I'm trying out, was released. I'm currently wrapping up production on the second episode, the Eastern conference first round will air on Christmas Day. The tournament continues on, but if you missed any of the highlights from the Western Conference first round, go check them out. I really love seeing all the comments on that video. I'm glad you all are enjoying it. Again, something new, but I've been wanting to do it for a number of months now and finally got around to making it happen. And I'm really, really, really excited by how it came out. And I'm excited to share the next several episodes with you all as well. So go check that out if you missed it from Monday. Now we're going to talk about the latest candidate for the Front Row Motorsports number 38 ride momentarily, but I want to start by talking about the Money Team Racing. Do you guys remember this team? I, we barely talked about them on this show because I barely know if they exist. Anyway, the Money Team Racing, to catch everyone up, is a team that was first heard from over a year ago at this point. It's a team, as the name suggests, that is named after Floyd Mayweather, the world famous boxer. And I say named after, on their official Twitter account, they do say they are owned by Floyd Mayweather, but as far as I can tell, Floyd Mayweather has no idea this team exists. This. I've heard reports that the guys who are actually running the money team are just paid to license Floyd Mayweather's brand. I'm not sure if that's entirely true. Again, I have no idea Floyd Mayweather at all knows that this team exists, but they do exist. In fact, they still exist in 2020. They were in the news this week. According to Adam Stern from Sports Business Journal, the money team racing is in discussions with Spire Motorsports to form a new partnership. The deal would involve Floyd Mayweather's team backing Spire in 21 before using a Spire charter in 2022 to run a full-time entry. There were other reports I saw that over the past several months, the money team was one of the teams looking to buy a charter. You know, charters like what Levine was selling, like what Jermaine Racing was selling, but obviously the money team got outbid. <laughs> Ironic, given their name literally has money in it, but no idea who the driver may be. Again, no idea how much money is actually behind this team. Again, I have no idea if Floyd Mayweather even knows they exist. As far as I can tell, the money team at this point is still sort of just a shapeless entity that I guess exists, but nobody can really see or put a finger on. But hey, if they're working with Spire Motorsports, a team that seems to be on the up and up, they're expanding to a two-car operation in 2021 and have already announced that Corey LaJoy will race full-time for them. Spire seems to be positioning themselves well to hit the ground running when the next-gen car arrives in 2022, and perhaps this partnership with Floyd Mayweather's team is going to be beneficial, is going to help them out, because Spire does now own two charters. That report from Adam Stern makes it sound like they would sell or loan or give one of those charters to the money team in 2022 if this team ever gets off the ground. So interesting to see how that ends up working out. But that's all we really know about the money team at this point. That's the first we've really heard from them now in basically a year. So good to know they still exist, I suppose. But let's move on from that. Let's talk about a team that does in fact exist and that we know will be racing next year. I'm talking about Beard Motorsports, you know, the 62 car made famous by the one and only Brendan Gone. Well, they have a new driver for 2021. Today, Chris Knight from Catch Fence reports that Noah Gragson will make his NASCAR Cup Series debut and will race in the Daytona 500 in that 62 car. Noah Gragson, Xfinity Series driver who won a few races last year. He actually won his first ever Xfinity race at Daytona last February. This is big, big news. Noah Gragson, one of the biggest personalities in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. He's going cup racing next year, at least for, for one race. It is the sport's biggest race, but... We'll see what happens. I saw Twitter this morning lit up around this news. A lot of Noah Gragson fans out there, a lot of Noah Gragson naysayers out there. He's he's become a polarizing figure, I think it's safe to say. This partnership with Beard Motorsports makes a ton of sense. Brendan Gaughan, of course, announced he was retiring after last year's race at Talladega. Brendan Gaughan's from Las Vegas, Noah Gragson's from Las Vegas, and Beard Motorsports has had South Point Casino on the car for years at this point, so the, the pairing up completely makes sense. Can Noah Gragson win the Daytona 500 next year? 
He certainly can. Brendan gaunt has been able to wheel that thing into the top 10 in a number of super speedway races over the years. And I can't help but think what if about the 2019 fall Talladega race when it seemed like he had the momentum, was making the pass for the lead late in that thing until you know all hell broke loose and he ended up flying through the air. But man, I cannot help but think what if Brendan Gaunt had been able to clear that wreck and, and possibly get the win. That would have been insane. That was less than, that was a year ago. So no Gregson can certainly win the Daytona 500, but he's going to have a tough journey even getting into the 500 because Beard Motorsports does not have a charter. So they're going to have to qualify for the race either on speed during qualifying day or in their dual race. Brendan Gaughan in a similar situation last year was able to qualify for the race. Noah Gregson, a young, young driver with literally zero Cup Series experience, may have a tall task ahead of him, but I'm extremely excited to follow that story throughout speed week. Noah Gregson is going Cup Series racing, albeit for perhaps just a one-off, but exciting to see what happens. Now let's talk about the biggest silly season story of the week. Front Row Motorsports, from the sounds of it, is very close to selecting their replacement for John Hunter Nemechek. Remember, John Hunter Nemechek was a rookie in 2019. I'm sorry, 2020. What year is it? <laughs> Nemechek was a rookie this year, finished 27th in points, but just a few weeks ago, he announced he would be leaving Front Row and took a ride at KBM in the NASCAR Truck Series. So now the last several weeks, the question has been, who will Front Row pick to drive that 38 car? Well, it sounds like they're close to making a decision and it may shock you. You won't believe number four. No, okay, sorry. Adam Stern from Sports Business Journal reported yesterday that Anthony Alfredo is in talks to join Front Row Motorsports to fill its open seat for the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series season. Uh, Anthony Alfredo? Y you mean the guy who has run one part-time Xfinity Series season? The guy who's like famous on TikTok? That, that guy? He's who's younger than I am? That guy is the top choice for Front Row Motorsports? Okay. I guess I don't know what I expected. I mean, what veteran driver is going to willingly take that ride when we all know that's a C-tier ride that's not really capable of running better than 20th or 25th on any given week, aside from the occasional top 10 or top 15. But I guess, what did we really expect? I figured... It would probably go to a young driver. I didn't see Anthony Alfredo coming. Lots to react to here, though. I like Anthony Alfredo a lot. He's been on, I don't know if he's been on this channel. He's been on the, the live podcast we do, but I don't know if it was on my channel. He's been on there a couple of times. He's really fun to talk to, really nice. I talked last week about how drivers need to engage with fans more, engage with sponsors. He is the perfect example of somebody who does it the right way. He's very engaging with fans. He's big on iRacing. He does a lot of sim racing. Like I said a moment ago, he's actually pretty well known on TikTok. He has, I think, over like 100, 150,000 followers. So I do like Anthony Alfredo, and I honestly think he'd be like a marketing team's dream, honestly. He's young, he's outgoing, he's engaging with fans, he's forward-thinking when it comes to social media, being an early adopter of TikTok, being huge on sim racing, and running leagues over there. I can see why a team would want him representing their sponsors. But now let's talk about the on-track merits of this. Has Anthony Alfredo done enough to warrant a Cup Series ride, a full-time gig? No, probably not. And I'm just being honest. I understand that's not how NASCAR works these days. Sponsorship is what it is. You got to take the opportunities when you can get them. I understand that not every driver in the Cup Series today is necessarily one of the 40 best stock car drivers in the world. I think a lot of them are, but I think there are some that likely are not. So I understand that's how business works. You got to take the opportunities when you get it. And Anthony Alfredo was kind of jobbed earlier this offseason, I'd say, when RCR announced they would be going with Myatt Snyder full time for their Xfinity team next year, basically cutting Alfredo out entirely. Let's talk about what Anthony Alfredo did in 2020. He made 19 starts for Richard Childress Racing. This was Alfredo's first year of any kind in the Xfinity Series. He had two top fives, nine top tens, an average finish of 12.6. All decent numbers, not fantastic numbers necessarily, but, but decent. But perhaps the most notable statistic is that he only had two DNFs, and only one was for a wreck of any kind. And it was that scary wreck at Kansas where I think Justin Allgaier helped him out a little bit. I'm impressed that a 20-year-old part-time rookie with no practice or qualifying on a brand new team was able to keep his nose clean most of the year. Compared to many of the other Xfinity Series regulars who are wrecking each other weekly, angry, fighting each other weekly, Anthony Alfredo, his ability to stay out of that drama and not cause any of it on the racetrack, I will say is pretty impressive. Is that alone enough for me to say he's going to be good in the Cup Series? No, I, I'm skeptical that he's going to do any better than John Hunter Nemechek did this last year, but I don't think he'll be, I certainly don't think he'll be worse. Look, John Hunter Nemechek caught a lot of people's attentions this year, especially early in the season when he had a couple top 10s shortly after NASCAR came back from the hiatus. I mean, we don't see front row cars in the top 10 outside of super speedways very often. So John Hunter Nemechek raised some eyebrows early on this year, but by the summer and second half of this year, it kind of just fell back to what you expect. 
Nemechek from front row. A lot of 25th, 30th place runs. And unfortunately for John Hunter Nemechek, the stark contrast between him and Anthony Alfredo is the fact that John Hunter Nemechek had five DNFs in the Cup Series last year. And according to the official incident reports, he led the NASCAR Cup Series being involved in 26 incidents throughout the year. That's more than any other driver in the Cup Series last season. So replacing John Hunter Nemechek, who I still think is really good, and I think is going to do great things in the trucks this next year, replacing him with Anthony Alfredo, a driver who proved at least this year in Xfinity that he's not going to get involved in any incidents. He's not going to make those aggressive mistakes and take himself or other people out. That could be the type of driver that a small team like Front Row Motorsports is looking for. Someone who's not going to wreck a ton of equipment. Cup Series cars, especially at road courses and short tracks, are a lot harder to drive than Xfinity or Truck Series cars are, however. So we'll see how Anthony Alfredo's skills translate this next year. But uh, this deal, while at first it was very, very surprising, I mean, we hadn't heard really any rumors about front runners for the Front Row Motorsports ride, but hearing it was Anthony Alfredo, and again, this deal is not finalized, but it is they're having deep discussions at this point about his involvement with the team, you know, this is surprising, but as we look a little bit deeper, Anthony Alfredo may be exactly what Front Row Motorsports is looking for right now. A marketable young driver with some talent, who at the very least likely will not wreck a lot of your equipment. So uh, Anthony Alfredo, I'm excited for him if this deal it does in fact work out. As an Anthony Alfredo fan myself, I would have loved to see him spend another year at least in the Xfinity series in a competitive car, stay in the ranks of a competitive organization for at least another year. That would have been optimal, but again, given what happened happened with him at RCR, losing that ride to Myatt Snyder, and with teams like Joe Gibbs Racing going with Daniel Hemrick or Colleg with Jeb Burton and AJ Allmendinger, it looks like competitive rides in the Xfinity Series filled up very, very quickly, so it looks like Anthony Alfredo likely had a few other options, so take the opportunity in the Cup Series when you get it. You never know. You can always do what John Hunter Nemechek did and try going back down to Trucks or Xfinity and get in the ranks of a competitive organization sometime soon again. I hope that this doesn't turn into kind of a dead end for uh, Anthony Alfredo's career. I don't think it will he's young enough he's gonna have the chance to move around to bounce back and forth and nobody's gonna blame him I, I don't think this is the end or like a dead end for Anthony Alfredo I think it's just a really cool opportunity to get some cup series experience you're gonna get to race with the big boys next year and sort of see where some of your skills stack up now let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Are you excited for Anthony Alfredo? Do you think this is the right move for his career? Do you think this was the right choice by Front Row Motorsports? Is he the right guy for the job? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, tell me what you think of Noah Gregson racing at Daytona. Let me know what you think of the money team. Do they exist? We may never know. <laughs> but that's all I've got for today's episode. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. We talk NASCAR almost daily and we have a busy week of videos ahead with not only Out of the Groove, but also the second episode of the Downhill Diecast Championship. So we do it all here on this channel. We're giving you your racing fix during the off season. So subscribe if you are not already. As always, a huge thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters as well. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate the support. I will see you all again very, very soon.